We've tested it. Now before I get into those performance mode numbers, I do want to mention the quality mode. This is the mode I recommend playing in right now. It targets 30 frames per second, yes, but it's a very steady experience, at least in most situations. There are instances where it can dip, but 99% of the game is locked and properly paced at 30 frames per second. I truly believe this was the mode the developers intended players to use, and it is the default for a reason. Look, I get it, I'm disappointed that 30 FPS is starting to become common again, but as I said when discussing Starfield, I think stability is most important of all. In so, I guess that's basically uh, John Linneman from Digital Foundry pretty much recommending that Final Fantasy 16 is probably better if you actually play it at 30 FPS. Now, I haven't bought the game on PlayStation and I don't intend to actually get the game on the PlayStation platform. If it's ever, you know, make it makes its way to PC, I'd prefer to play it there cuz, you know, I mean, if I'm going to be spending $70 for a video game, I would prefer to just play it at the, you know, highest possible, uh, you know, settings and, you know, graphics uh, because that's just pretty much the choice I want to actually implement in this particular situation. Also, I'm not really a big Final Fantasy fan, so that's also probably weighing towards it. If you're a fan and you want to go ahead and get the game, that's perfectly fine. Now, this conversation has come full circle. I think we're getting more and more 30 FPS games, and even this game running at 60 FPS, according to Digital Foundry, is one that's locked to, uh, you know, 60 FPS when you're in combat, but then exploration, the frame rate kind of dips. And as described here by John Linnerman, if you've watched the review, uh, or if you haven't watched it, I recommend you go watch it. The game locks at 60 FPS by actually maintaining 720 for its resolution. So they're using some kind of a resolution scaling to be able to lock it at 720. I'm not going to dog on this game because I already know the, you know, the amount of juice that a game like this requires. Animation, visual effects, all kinds of stuff that a game should need, an open world and so on and so forth that video games usually have and as they're making these ambitious titles, it doesn't seem like the Series X and the PS, uh, you know, 5 are capable of getting the job done like you would, you know, imagine like you would think. And I know somebody's going to go ahead and cite Spider-Man, but again, if you guys listen to exactly what John Linneman just said, he probably thought that they were intending to actually design this video game from ground up with 30 FPS in mind. Now, I will have to say, though, the whole 30 FPS conversation is not necessarily something that has ever been a deal breaker for video games. If you think about it, Zelda is going to be contending for game of the year and it's a 30 FPS game. Starfield is coming out at 30 FPS on a console. And now this game, its recommendation is that you actually play it at 30 FPS to be able to get at least the higher resolution and better stability overall. So it's kind of interesting nonetheless, though. That if you said this eight months ago, you were a shill or you were crazy or you were accepting, you know, mediocre quality. And especially from a lot of folk who play on the PlayStation platform, I kind of tried to, you know, reason with the community and saying, hey, guys, this is not necessarily something that, you know, we can always just run all over the place and expect every single video game to be able to pull it off. Some games are going to be limited in their scope and it's easier for you to scale down with a higher target in terms of your results for 60 FPS. But there are many things that you're going to have to give when you're firing visual effects, when you're firing a bunch of AI, you know, people don't necessarily realize that Spider-Man, you know, Marvel Spider-Man is basically in, in quote from, uh, you know, a development perspective. The world is not firing too much in terms of demand. Yes, you see people and assets on the road, but you can literally use code to be able to multiply all these NPCs that you're seeing. But when it comes to enemy AI, they have to be responsive to the player. So they actually are more demanding when it actually when ru the rubber meets the road. So this is why you see that when the developers actually went ahead to, you know, lock the combat in the Final Fantasy game, as reported here by Digital Foundry, they had to pretty much change the resolution because then you're not only doing fire and, uh, you know, all these blazing effects, you now have to do camera motion, animation change, player warping. Basically, your player can warp from one place to the other and so you really need a juicy machine that can get the job done when all these interactions are going on because as this ai may be standing here and hitting the ai is actually programmed to look for you the player so the ai is tracking you as you're moving around you're moving here the ai code is saying move to player the ai is saying do this move all these things are cpu intensive 
So when you actually make a comparison with a game like Spider-Man, because, you know, a lot of people want to throw it out there, Horizon, you know, Forbidden West and so on and so forth, you realize that there's a reason Horizon Forbidden West is not super duper melee-y like, you know, the Final Fantasy game. Yes, you have big machines. Someone said, how was Horizon Forbidden West able to do it with all these big machines running around the world? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I guess they use some checkerboard rendering according to Digital Foundry to be able to get you, you know, some really interesting resolution, uh, you know, uh, results and so on and so forth. So the alchemy and all the studios and their engines and, you know, the fact that they have to pretty much, you know, prioritize all kinds of different things make it very dynamic in a sense. Not every studio is going to have the same implementation. Not every studio had, um, you know, all of the different technology that they would have loved to implement, like if they had used maybe FSR 2 in this game, uh, Final Fantasy, possibly, it would have probably given a better performance. But FSR 1 is what John Linneman is saying that they probably used. Well, I'm not certain if it's FSR 1 or FSR 2, but maybe while developing the game, they'd already started using FSR 1, and they were like, we're just going to continue to go from there. So already, the lifespan of our consoles that Microsoft and Sony sold to us are... I don't know if it's the lifespan. I just think it's just the hardware itself because, you know, sure, this is Final Fantasy, but yeah, I guarantee you that when you move into, like, say, the mid range 30 series, if this game is actually, you know, given to a PC with a nice CPU, a PC is going to eat it up. No doubt about that. And then there's also the conversations of people's PS5s getting hot. This is something that actually came up the other, uh, you know, the other day. And this was during the demo. Apparently, this has kind of made its way into the full game. I recently saw this article on Games Radar, and it's quite interesting. It says Final Fantasy 16 fans are concerned that its epic boss fights are making their PS5s overheat. They go ahead and cite somebody here and say Final Fantasy, uh, you know, uh, fans are concerned. Uh, you know, the 16th installment of the world's most ironically named series is finally here. The good news is this, is this, is this. And then they say these users are having these experiences. They're a bunch of ads. But this person says here, a boss fight made my PS5 overheat so much that it just turned off. A lot of the folk here were asked if they cleaned their, you know, console. And they said, yeah, some people said they didn't find any dirt in their console. But I think what's going on and some people are like, it's only for this game, though, maybe it's it's just the old PS5, you know, spec or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, whether it's the old PS5 spec or the new PS5 spec, the hardware is just limited overall as to how much it can render without actually causing a huge ruckus. And this is the reality that PC gamers have faced for the longest time. And to actually bring a console and tout it with that kind of marketing is going to bite these companies in the butt. Or at least, I guess, they're, they've already make, they made their money. They, the scalpers bought everything. And, you know, it was off the shelves, so they were fine. It was the perfect storm for them to be able to sell these consoles and actually somehow, by some interesting set of events, a huge demand was even created and caused because of all of the different activity that was going on with the scalping market at that time. So this is a firestorm and developers are going to just have to, in order for them to not necessarily get into all of this ruckus, they're going to have to just scale down their games and not bother. They're going to basically be able to take one game and put, you know, three versions of the game in the same city like Spider-Man has done, like the Arkham games have done, and go back to their 2000 and, you know, eight selves of making games. That's basically what it is that we're going to see should these games need to actually be tuned for the consoles. Other than that, it's going to be 30 FPS whenever the game gets super ambitious or it's going to be a scaled down game where the game looks beautiful, but then you're going to be done with it in a few hours, which is fine. I'm not against a game like that. In fact, I welcome games like that. But the question is, are a lot of fans going to be down with it? But anyways, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section about all of this. Uh, it's quite interesting to see all this coming full circle. In my mind, somehow, uh, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know, I, I feel a little relief because at some point, you know, a lot of people were disliking my videos whenever I would say stuff like this. You know, basically harming, you know, the you know, the visibility of my videos because they just were in their feelings more than wanting to actually accept the fact. But again, this is something, whenever you say something like this is a little counter- uh, you know, intuitive. And now the digital foundry that was actually, you know, in a sense, pouring on top of Gotham Knights because it was at 30 FPS and it dropped five frames in one spot are now the digital foundry that's basically recommending that you play Final Fantasy at 30 FPS. And that's something. Talk to me in the comment section. Peace out.